So we're going to find the distance in the measure and the midpoint. So I'm going to actually just do one of these. I'm going to do number two because it looks harder, but it's really not. So remember, midpoint is x plus x over 2 and y plus y over 2. You're just averaging them. So for the first one, 1 half minus 5 halves. Well, 1 minus 5 is negative 4, so that's negative 4 halves, which is simply just negative 2. Okay? And actually, I believe this was a typo, so go ahead and just change this. This was supposed to be negative 3 halves, and it didn't um, go in correctly. So go ahead and change that to negative 3 halves. Um, but negative 3 plus 3 is 0 over 2, so just 0, and then average over 2. So this midpoint is going to end up being a negative 1, comma 0. And if you just think about it real quick, let's make these really big here. If you think about where 1 half negative 3 halves is, well 1 half is halfway between 0 and 1, and negative 3 halves is negative 1 and a half. So that's about here. And negative 5 halves is negative 2 and a half, 1 and a half, so that's going to be about up here. And this is really not the strongest scale. That was a horrible decline. So if I connected those two, you know, pretty close to negative one zero. And that's just a rough sketch. But you know, that shows you where the midpoint would be. Now I'm going to do the distance formula, which is x minus x squared plus y minus y squared. So we're going to use the same numbers, okay? So, 1 half minus a negative 5 halves squared plus negative 3 halves minus 3 halves squared. Okay. So, this ends up being plus, and 1 half plus 5 halves is 6 halves, which is 3, and 3 squared is... 9, and negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6, divided by 2 is negative 3, and that squared is going to be also 9. So the distance is the square root of 18, but this can be simplified because 9 is a perfect square, so this is actually 3 root 2, and you could also put it in the decimal by just typing in your calculator, 3 times the square root of 2 and get 4.24. That's your distance. All right, find the measure of the R. Okay, AB. So AB is right here. Well, we don't have a number there. But we see that CF is to the center, it's a diameter. So CBE is a semicircle, which means 180 degrees. So if we take 180 minus 75 minus 42, we get 63 right here. So AB is 63 degrees. Now CD, let's look at that. Okay, let's look at CD. CD is formed by these two lines right here. Well, what we have there is vertical angles, so that's 42 degrees. DE, well, DE is right here, and that's the balance of 180 minus 42, which is 138. BCD, so purple, B, C, D is 75 plus 42. Now, why is that wrong? 
why is BCD not a major arc? Well, when we add it together, you get 117 degrees. Now, technically, nothing is saying it's a major arc, but it is using three letters, and usually we reserve three letters for a major arc. So, if we looked at it this way, let's say CBD, that would definitely be a major arc, and that would be 360 minus 42. But let's leave it, and let's go on to AED. AED starts here, and goes around to D. So that's 138 plus 42, Okay, if we add those together, well, look what we're going to have here. Semicircle, right? 180 degrees. Okay, standard equation of a circle. Okay, so X and Y represent any point on a circle. So that's just any dot. Anywhere you want to put, you know, a dot on a circle, that's X, Y. The center is H comma K and the radius is going to be r, not too confusing there. So, use the Pythagorean theorem. We have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. This is the standard equation with hk at the center and r being the radius. So, now we're just going to do some problems and practice that. Okay, it says write the standard equation of each circle circle shown to the left. Well, this one's pretty simple because you can see where the center is. The center is at zero, zero. It's always nice to write these things. And the radius, be careful, see if you're counting, what they're counting by. This is one, two, three, so the radius is three. So technically, this is x minus zero squared plus y minus 0 squared equals 3 squared. But we're just going to simplify and say x squared plus y squared equals 9. That was squared. Now, what about a circle with its center at 0, negative 9 and a radius of 4.2? Well, we're just going to do the same thing. This is my x, that's my y. So I'm going to do x minus 0 squared plus y minus the negative 9 squared equals 4.2 squared. So this simplifies to just x squared. This simplifies to y plus 9 squared and 4.2 squared is 17.64. That's the equation of that circle. Okay, example 2. The point negative 5, 6 is on the circle, right there. Center, 1, 3, right there. Okay, write the standard equation of the circle. Well, first off, so to find the radius here, we need to do the distance formula, which is why we reviewed it. So we're going to do the square root of negative 5 minus negative 1 squared plus 6 minus 3 squared. So this can become plus. So negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. That's going to be 16. 6 minus 3 is 3. Squared is 9. That makes 25. And so that's 5. But if you look, we have points right here on the circle. And we can just count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, it's not always going to be this way where you might have a horizontal or vertical uh, line be right on the circle, okay, like that. But if you have that case, you could just count. So we know r is 5, okay. And now we just plug in the numbers we have at the center. x minus negative 1 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 5 squared. And then we just want to clean it up a little bit and make it x plus 1 squared 
plus y minus 3 squared equals 25. Okay, we're finished. Okay, equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared minus xy plus minus x plus 4y minus 16. Find the center and the radius, then graph it. Okay, so first off, we're going to rearrange it and put these together and move this over. So I'm going to rewrite it x squared minus 8x plus y squared plus 4y equals 16. Okay. Now, we have to do, from algebra 1, we have to complete the square. What that means is, we need to find out, technically, what goes here and here so we can factor this. So, what we do is we do this. And it's very easy once you get the hang of it. We're going to leave a blank there. Plus y squared plus 4y. I'm going to leave a blank there. Equals 16. Okay. Now, here's the trick of this. It's very simple. We're going to look at this middle number. We're going to come down here. And we're going to take half of that number. And square it. And that's going to be plus 16. 4 squared. And then over here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take half of this number, y plus 2, and square it. Now, we added 16 and 4 to the left side, so we have to add 20 here. So that equals 36. So technically, the only thing we have to fix is, to write this in correct form, is, because we're trying to find the radius, I mean this is correct form, but what is the radius? Well, the radius is the square root of 36, because remember this is 6 squared, if we're going the other direction. This is easy, x minus 4, remember this is really y minus negative 2. So, what is my center? It's 4, negative 2, and a radius of 6. Now remember, if you forget that, all you have to do is set x minus 4 equal to 0, and y plus 2 equal to 0, and that will give you 4, negative 2. I know this part, probably 3 for loop, because you haven't done that in a while since algebra 1, but we will practice it. But if you can remember this little cheat here, it makes it very easy. Okay, example four. Prove or disprove that this point is on the circle with the center at two, zero. Okay. Now I did forget, I'm going to go back real quick here. I did forget to graph this circle. Not a big deal. So we want to have our center at four, negative two. like that. And our radius is 6. So if you think about it, that means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's going to be about here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. About here. And we have to count straight up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this is going to be a horrible looking circle. Graph paper would make it much easier, but that's about what it would look like. Alright, back to this one. So, if you think about this, the point square root 2, square root 2, we're not going to be able to graph that easily, but think about it, it contains the point 2, 0. Okay, so our circle, you know, is going to look like that approximately. Well, we know the radius right now. It's 2. Okay, the radius is 2. Now, if it wasn't so obvious, like let's say the point was at 2, 1. Now what we have to do is find the radius. And here's how we would do it if it was not as easy to just do it from a graph. So we would take 
and do our formula. And we're going to work backwards from this. X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared. Now, if this looks familiar, this is the formula, but usually we have a square here and no square root on this side. But if we're just trying to find R, we take the square root of both sides. And that's what we're doing here. So the radius, if we didn't already know, would be the square root of 2, the x minus 0, squared, plus 0 minus 0, squared. Well, 2 squared is 4, 0 squared is 0, and so that would give me r equals 2. So that would be, you know, like I said, let's say we are given, you know, a point at there. And it didn't go through an exact point. We would have to find the radius by using this formula. But in this case, we were able to figure it out quicker. So, that's the radius. Now, the only way this is a circle is if this point is two, a distance of 2 from the origin. So, we have to do the distance formula, which we reviewed earlier. So, square root of 2 minus 0 squared plus the square root of 2 minus 0, 0, 0 being the origin, squared. Well, square root of 2 minus 0 is square root of 2, and square root of 2 squared cancels, right? That's 2 plus 2, which is the square root of 4, which means the distance is 2. So yes, square root of 2, square root of 2 is on a circle. Last example. The epicenter of an earthquake is the point on Earth's surface directly above the earthquake's origin. A seismograph can be used to determine the distance to the epicenter of an earthquake. Seismographs are needed in three different places to locate an earthquake's epicenter. Use the seismograph readings from the locations A, B, and C to find the epicenter of the earthquake. Okay, so this one, you actually would need graph paper to be exact with this, but we're going to put our uh, circles on here. So negative 2, 2.2, 2.5 is going to be right here. And a radius of 7. So I'm going to just count 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then straight up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now this is going to be really rough. That's a horrible circle there. Okay. Now the next one is the center of 4, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And it has a radius of 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Like so. And there's my better circle. And my last one is at 3, negative 2 and a half. Right there. With a radius of 5. If it was a better drawn circle, they would actually all meet right here at that point. And that means 5, 2 is the epicenter.